Greetings. This is the Get To Free Press, and I'm George Boss Derides. I'm in Valdosta, Georgia. This morning I was called by Bobby Worthy from Waycross, Georgia, and he told me about what was posted on Facebook. And he sent me some pictures, which I'm going to share in this video at some point. that um, we do take everything serious. And that's why on August 6th, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly, so I want everybody to know that we did do what we're supposed to do, and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -mm. So, I wanted to put that on record. Mm -mm. The public wasn't notified. Today is August the 6th, 4.59. We've been here for over an hour, and finally, what's your name? William Akers, Jr. Do you have any problems with me publishing this on Facebook or going public with this to let people know? You give me permission give to get permission. to Free Press. What's your name? Kevin Wade. Mr. Wade, you give me permission to do this? Yes, sir. Not for yourself, but for the people that you left behind, am I correct? Yes, sir. What's your name? Kevin Wade. I do give you permission to let my voice out, my voice be heard. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Ransom, yes, sir. will you bear witness oh, yeah. that nobody in here was co coerced to oh, yeah. say what they said? They spoke from their own. From their heart. Do you have a problem with me using this? Not at all. Or even to send it to news media outlets? Not at all. So they will know Fair what is going on in Tyler Town, USA. Tell that nobody Tell probably would publish. 
but we report Tally. what others ignore. Tally. My beautiful brother, yes, what's sir. your name? James Joyce. Do you give permission for us to do and to publish under the First Amendment of the Constitution that we have a right in this country and we also <laughs> are due to freedom of the press even if they won't press our issues to the paper, we still have that right. All right. So you give me that permission. I do give you that permission. All right. What's your name? My name is Darrell Davis. Darrell Davis, you were the first one. They're going to see you as a troublemaker because we would not have known about this All right. if, you have, if you hadn't told somebody. All right. So I just want to know, do you also grant permission to release this and make it public for the good right. of the people that work at work at this company. I can't think of the name of it. Do y'all know the name of it? Aquatic 56. The new name is what? Aquatic 56. Plant 56. That's what the 56 stands for. That's the 56 plant. Okay. And does anybody know the official address? 1610 P.D. Roger Road. Okay. And where is the home office? That's Tennessee. Yes. That's in Tennessee. Tennessee. Office in Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay. They may need to know about this as well. Please. They may already know, Please. but the people that works there, they're going to have to do a little work for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, this is the Get To Free Press. I'm George Boston Rhymes. I'm a retired military veteran. I started this work in 1975. I did it. citizen that seen this. I, I I do not appreciate this. I have kids, I have grandkids, I have loved ones, and I don't think anybody should have to go through what my grandparents, I thought my grandparents was the one that, you know, experienced this and, and went through this type of situation. I never thought I'll be one of the ones that faced this. Yeah, do what we're supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So, I want to put that on record. Mm -hmm. Public wasn't notified. Any, any we were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rhymes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately as soon as we found out. I don't know what you're aware of that or not, but we did. And, uh, and they addressed the situation down there, and the business took care of it. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. All right. And now you, you're not going to let me say anything? Respond. No. It, it, just, just the truth, I, I think uh, they got a lot of supporters supporting our president, and through him and and his views, they just 
bold now. Mm -hmm. They just coming out and, and don't care. And and this is one of the things that I see that, you know, just show me they don't even, you know, they don't hide it anymore. They don't care. They they don't consider us as as humans, I assume. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't really tell you what they think, but I know what I think. Right. Okay. It's wrong. All right. Thank you very much, my beautiful brother. Okay. Before this to come in, you to come in, the majority of this plant is red by black. Blacks are more dominant in this plant. For for them to come in and see this, you don't appreciate it. Because if you had as you appreciate it, the, the person who seen this would have tore it down before the ship even got in. I would have took a picture as a supervisor. I would have took a picture, tore it down, and showed it to my supervisor. That's what that's the proper way. I would have let everybody came in and got all riled up because it is ignorant. Now as the as the, the plant manager or whoever I go to, he got to address this. Because you don't want the people to get riled up about this. Cause that's like you're spinning out their face. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to that there. I'm like Cavway of Calvary and all this will say it. With that unemployment, mm -hmm. like what I was saying, I was hurt. Mm -hmm. They didn't give me no short-term disability, short-term, did nothing. They didn't want to give me the unemployment and try to file on the medical. You see what I'm saying? They had them put quit on the paper, just like Cam mm -hmm. said. They put a lot for black men that to block them. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rhymes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately as soon as we found out. They addressed the situation down there and the business took care of it. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. All right. And now you, you're not going to let me say anything? Respond. No, no, she they don't care. They they don't consider us as as humans, I assume. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't really tell you what they think, but I know what I think. Right. Okay. It's wrong. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rhymes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately as soon as we Found out. I don't know what you're aware of that. Awful did. And, uh, and they addressed the situation down there, and the business took care of it. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. All right. You're not going to let me say anything? Respond. No, she gets Excuse me. What's your name? My name is Calvin Wade. And what do you? What kind of work do you do? Fiberglass. I, work, I used to work at this this company once. Um, I worked there for four years. What company are you talking about? Bath Crab, the name of it now is Aquatic, um, bath, American Bath Group. But I'm, I'm currently employed at a better job, better pay, and treat the people way better. Um, I've been there going on the month, the eighth of make a month that I've been there. And that's why this, looking at this disturbing picture right here has a lot to do with one of the reasons I chose to leave that job. Okay. Well, uh, uh, since you was not there and you didn't see the, what you didn't see what you were talking about there, uh, look at number one, picture label mark number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, just hold it up and tell me in your own words what that means to you, although you wasn't there. What does that mean to you and what is it? Hang a black man. That's what that means. You see the noose right there behind the flag. And in, in this particular area, now let me remind you, I was a supervisor there. This particular area is only authorized to maintenance. That's the maintenance guy right there. Mm -hmm. Is, is this uh, this area is only authorized to him all day, every day. So for that to be hanging there, he got to have a knowledge man of it. Either he did it or he know who done it. Because that's his area. He's a held accountable for that area. So I don't, know, I don't see no other employees being able to come out their workstation to do this in a proper amount of time and not be caught. Only a person who are authorized to that area have that time. Okay, now, you're not working there. You have another job. You have another job, but if you was there and that had happened, what you think you would have done? How would you have I would have lost that? my job that morning. Fine. I would have lost I wouldn't have worked. They couldn't, I, I wouldn't have worked until they resolved that matter. That matter should have been resolved properly. Okay. You, you just can't say, you, well, you just can't say, I don't know who done it. I can't prove who done it. You already know who area that is. If you go over there and find something in that area, he's responsible. He's the only one that works in that area. That guy right there. Okay. That's his area daily. 
Okay. And anything else you want to tell us, uh, your experience while working at, what kind of environment was there? Well, the, the, in the environment, it's more blacks than anything in the environment. And um, to be honest, it's a job, it is a job, but you're not being treated fairly. Mm -hmm. You're already coming in the door underpaid, automatically. Okay. Underpaid. When you say underpaid, how much you start out with? When I started, it was nine dollars an hour. Okay. Now they have a new pay scale of ten dollars an hour okay. coming in. And how long were you there? I was there four years. What, what were you on the end of the salary? I was at forty-eight thousand a year okay. so as a supervisor, okay. but on salary. Okay. Anything after four dollars, I'm gonna get paid for it. I, I, my my time stopped at forty, but you got me working seventy-five to eighty hours a week. Anything after ten hours over time, you should compensate me something. I never got it. So you would work up to how many hours? 75 to 80 hours a week. Okay. Now, now is this going uh, is, is it traditional work? I mean, how was different landing? It was every day. It was, that was, the, that was my schedule. Okay. For I get there from 4, say, from 4.20, and I leave out there 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7.30 some night. Some night, and I left out there at 8. Okay. And what kind of agreement? Did you ever think, did you have any agreements problems there? Did you get any insurance or anything like that? Benefits? How you make it? I just had assurance. Uh, other than that, it was just you work. No benefits. No benefits. It's just you work. And what name is this company again? Uh, American Aquatic American Bath Group. Okay, but originally they didn't know it as Bath Craft. Bath Craft. Okay. That's why we couldn't find it. We went out there because the name was. Changed. They changed the name. Yes. Okay. It's Aquatic Fifty Six to be exact. Aquatic Fifty Six. Look here, number one. Thank you. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rhymes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately. As soon as we found out, I don't know what you're aware of that or not, but we did. And, um, and they addressed the situation down there, and the business took care of it. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. All right. And now you, you're not going to let me say anything? Respond? No, no she uh, that's not, that's not good. Any other citizen would like to. a serious to matter. A serious matter. And what's your name? My name is Daryl Lamar Davis. And senior. Okay. And, but were you the one that I talked to this morning? Yes, sir. You called me, right? Yes, sir. I didn't call you, did you? No, sir. Why did you call to get two free breaks? Because um, it was actually needs to be took, and no one would lead me to the right, you know, the right path. So when, well, you know, someone called me, named Bobby, told me to get in touch with you, I know we can go a little further with this. I did. Now, what do you see wrong? at this company and do you still work at and if not why not um i don't work there anymore because how they're getting treated i mean it was the thing about the pay and about all the hours you know and you know i lost i lost my sister at this um, you know doing probably like a month ago two months ago and i had to worry about our job scared the whole time of the you know the grieving you know at the at the funeral i'm trying to get in touch with them saying i'm lost my job or not and you know, <laughs> when stuff going on like that, don't put some happen like that. You know. And like I said, man, it's just. Okay, so when you called me, you uh, had posted something on Facebook, right? Yes, sir. Okay, since you was the one that sent those to, uh, I mean, the body got from you, right? He got from you some kind of way. Right. Well, you may need to take, start at one and explain to what, you, what, 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 what was going on there. And, and, and what do you have copies of there? Okay, um, this is at Aquatic, in Georgia. Um, it's a lynch and, a, um, and an American flag. So when you say a lynch, you're saying a noose, right? A noose, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And why do you think someone would put that in a building behind, right in front of the United States flag? Uh, I couldn't say there's a lot of racism going on there. You think a lot of racism? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's one of the reasons I left there because I was uh, current in the office were four guys, you know, which I could have put my supervisor or anything in, but they wouldn't let me do that. And they talked to me very badly. That's the reason I left. Mm -hmm. When they talk real bad, what do you mean by? They talk real bad. Um, I don't been at bad craft what six and a half, seven years. Mm -hmm. A lot of experience, mm -hmm. and um, I went in there, you know, to talk about my pay rate, which my pay rate was at ten dollars, which I was told that if I came back that in um, ninety days that I would get a pay raise. Mm -hmm. Okay, which we're going to talk about. They gave the whole finish line a pay raise mm -hmm. and took it back less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm telling them, asking them, like, you know, 
is am I gonna get that raise that I promised me at 90 days? They told me no, I won't get the raise because they ain't making enough profit. Okay, let's go back a little bit. You was employed there before. Yes, sir. To explain that a little bit to us. Uh, I was there. How many years? I was there. I was there. What? Four and a half years. The first time I was there. Okay. And, and what, what was your pay when you left? When I, was, I left there, it was like thirteen seventy five. Okay. So you know, and when I came back. Like I said, they started. They told me they was gonna start around ten dollars, which I was very fine with that. But when they told me nine days, I like, get my you know right pay that I was gonna be getting. I was okay with that too. And my ninety days came up, which nothing changed. And I well, had a meeting with plant manager, his his boss man, and um another guy from Texas. And like I said, it, nothing didn't change. I told them about all the experience I had, and they pretty much told me my experience don't mean nothing. I mean, you say experience, you had experience in what? And a building battle to as in fiberglass. Finishing. Finishing. Okay, because you've been there before. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, now, when you look at those pictures, and, and we're going to close this out, but when right. you look at those pictures, who who do you want to see those pictures, and what do you think can be done? Uh, I want the rural to see the pictures. Mm -hmm. Because see, we shouldn't have to work, you know, <laughs> we shouldn't have to work like, in this, you know, in this kind of thing. We shouldn't have to do this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, People talking to us like we're still in slavery. Well, I, mean, I, I read that online. And what do you mean they talk to you like that? They talk to everybody out there like that? Oh, people I, are still working and they still talk to them like yes, that? Yes, sir. I have people that still work there as in today. Mm -hmm. They're waiting to get off to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And, man, they talk to everybody like it, it either... Job scared. Yeah, you, I mean, you're pretty much job scared. You, job either, scared, you right? either show up or you can go on about your business. Okay. And like, what, when I heard you ask Kevin Wade on the interview, you asked him about um, the benefits. Okay, they give us insurance. Yes, they do. But, you know, I can't use my insurance. You know, I, I'm on a point system that if I miss a day, I'm scared. I'm job scared. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to get fired or pointed out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're giving me something I can't use. Mm -hmm. So, do a lot of people turn over fast? I mean, yeah, turn over real. they don't stay there long. Oh, no, real, sir. No, sir. Real, nah, real, nah. Real. Nah. Yeah. And everybody got pretty much scared. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Like, <laughs> okay, now, uh, you're the second person that I'm interviewing. Right. And, and we're about to close this out. But... What I want you to tell me is if, what I want you to tell me, I can hear it all right out. I don't know why I think I got it. I could it up. Huh? Anyway, we're going to cut it in the call. Take some of these calls. Uh, I want to get you to close your phone for a second. Uh, yeah. Have you ever filed a complaint about discrimination or EEOC, a bad work environment, or, or, or something wrong with your wages? Have you ever filed a complaint? Uh, sir, there have been a lot of claims signed, and I don't ask for a lot of you know paperwork that never get to a corporate, ever. Okay. Okay. Do you have any copy of your paperwork that you've that you written to them? The only uh, paperwork I have is with background. That's what I'm saying. Right. They, right. they have it. You don't have a copy of it? No, sir. I don't have a copy of it. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So, uh, thank you very much. And what's your name again? My name is Daryl Lamar Davis. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rimes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately. As soon as we found out, I don't know what you're aware of that, and uh, they addressed the situation down there, and the business took care of it. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. All right. You You're not going to let me say anything? Respond? No, sir. Excuse me. What's your name? My name is James Joyce. And James Joyce, uh, where did you work? I uh, formerly worked at uh, Bathcraft American Bath Group. Mm -hmm. And what's your experience there? Well, my experience is uh, it, was, it wasn't a great place to work, but if you have to have employment, you know, sometimes you have to do things that you choose not to and that was my experience i was there five years it hadn't always been terrible okay. but it got to that point why did it get terrible there back then i think ownership changed uh the previous owner i think he sold it and and uh eventually he passed away and things went downhill from there we were certainly concerned about that mr Rimes, and we had Investigate that thing immediately as soon as we 
addressed the situation down there and the business took care of it. Mr. Mayor. All right. And no, you, You're not going to let me say anything? Respond. No, they don't care. They they don't consider us as as humans, I assume. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't really tell you what they think, but I know what I think. Right. It's wrong. But but as you look at them, um, hold on one of the big ones and tell me what do you think as a former employee, what do you think if you was working there? And if you see that right there, uh, I don't know what time your shift or the shift changes, I'm not sure. But if you see that when you go into work, what does that say to you? That's saying it's some racism going on there, and that's a place I don't want to be. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rimes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately. As soon as we found out, I don't know what you're aware of that or not, but we did. And, um, and they addressed the situation down there, and the business took care of it. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. All right. And no, you, you're not going to let me say anything? Respond. No, she is when you was there, did you ever file, out, file out any complaints uh, as far as discrimination, unfair treatment, anything like that? Well, no, I, I didn't file complaints as in paperwork, mm -hmm. but I did go Verbal. verbally to the plant manager and voice my complaints, and I always got sort of brushed off or put to a point like, well, if you still want to work here, you got to, you know, let me take care of it as in his one. But he never, mm -hmm. ever made any progress of taking care of any of the things that I complained about or I voiced my opinion about. And some of them was verbally in front of other employees. Mm -hmm. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rimes, and we had the police Mr. Mayor. All right. And no, you're not going to let me say anything? Respond. No, she is So, how is the professionalism out there? Did they treat you like somebody or, or just, like he said, a, a slave? Terrible. terrible. It, it is terrible. I, I've, I've worked to several places in my lifetime and in the industry, and I never, never worked under those conditions. Mm -hmm. Never. It, it, it's the worst place I ever worked at under those conditions. and. The, the pay, the, the, the uh, benefits? plant manager, benefits, all of that, it, it's, it's no good. Okay. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rimes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately. As soon as we found out, I don't know what you're aware of that or not, but we did. And, um, and they addressed the situation down there, and the business took care of it. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. You're not gonna let me say anything. Respond. No, she is perfect. Why are you here? Why did you take time out to come here today? Because I'm not satisfied with this. I wouldn't care if I was a former employee or uh, uh, just an ordinary citizen that seen it. I, I I do not appreciate this. I have kids. I have grandkids. I have loved ones, and I don't think anybody should have to go through what my grandparents, I thought my grandparents was the one that, you know, experienced this and, and went through this type of situation. I never thought I'll be one of the ones that faced this. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rimes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately. As soon as we found out, I don't know what you're aware of that, but we did. And, um, and they addressed the situation down there, and the business took care of it. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. All right. And no, you, you're not going to let me say anything? Respond. No, she is perfect. Uh, what kind of image do you think a noose in August of 2019 says about Titletown, USA, the football capital of the United States of America? What does that say to the city of Valdosta in your own words? To me, it says it's, it's, it's going... To hell. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rimes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately. As soon as we found out, I don't know what you're aware of that or not, but we did. And, um, and they addressed.
rest of the situation down there and the business took care of it. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. All right. And now you, You're not going to let me say anything? Respond? It is just, just the truth. I, I think uh, they got a lot of supporters supporting our president, and through him and and his views, they just bold now. Mm -hmm. They just coming out and, and don't care. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rhymes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately as soon as we found out. Mr. Mayor. All right. You, you're not going to let me say anything? Respond. And, and this is one of the things that I see that, you know, just show me they don't even, you know, they don't hide it anymore. They don't care. They they don't consider us as, as humans, I, I assume. You know, I can't really tell you what they think, but I know what I think. It's wrong. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rhymes. Mr. Mayor. All right. And you, you're not going to let me say anything? Respond. No, she didn't I'm going to go back there. Unlike Calvin and Calvin and all of us are saying, with that unemployment, like what I was saying, I was hurt. They didn't give me no short-term disability, short-term, did nothing. They didn't want to give me the unemployment until I went file on the medical. You see what I'm saying? They had them put quit on the paper, just like Calvin mm -hmm. said. They put a lot for black men that to block them, mm -hmm. so they can't come. And mm -hmm. see, by the, like when you were asking the question why a lot of them haven't came out yet about what's going on, like I said, you're working at a company that, you know, you got a job, and the least thing you do, you ain't got a job. Mm -hmm. So you got family, you got you got people like us got family. It's a lot of us just coming and, home from prison. I, just, yeah. I ain't been home for eight months. Yeah. The day I came so home, I that started job, prison now. That job means yeah. it means something to us, it's important to us. And our family, how we live and how mm -hmm. we take care of our family, for us to just be one minute we got a job, the next minute we don't have a job. We were certainly concerned about that, Mr. Rhymes, and we had the police investigate that thing immediately as soon as we found out. I don't know what you're aware of that, but we did. And, uh, and they addressed the situation down there, and the business took care of it. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. All right. And now you, you're not going to let me say anything? Respond. When, when I was there, the, the plant manager, he, he didn't, I don't, I, I don't think he cared for me personally because I voiced my opinion. I didn't, I didn't hold back and I voiced my opinion, but I let my work speak for itself. Anybody that have worked with me and worked there during that period of time, that was their words were, I was the best finisher they had. Now, that was their words, not mine, but I let my work speak for, them, for me. But during that time, uh, I would work. I would train other fellows. As a matter of fact, I trained this fellow. This was my supervisor, Kevin Wade. And during that, in that period of time, an uh, incident came up to me. I just I thought about it. Uh, they had to do some repairs on the, on the road. Yeah. And my, my supervisor came to me and asked me, he said, James, would you like to go on the road, make a little extra money, and you know, I say, sure, man, yeah, I, you know, I'll do that. He said, okay, well, you go on the road with him and have him fix some tubs. That um, we do take everything serious, and that's why I'm always upset that you know the chief manager is trying to get assess the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly, so I want everybody to know that we did do what we were supposed to do, and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So, I want to put that on the record. Mm -hmm. The public wasn't notified. I had them took it upon me that my supervisor came to me and told me that, that, you know, I had the job going on the road, helping fix the tub. Next thing I know, swatting my 
the white boy came and told me, white fella, Mike, came and told me, well, no name, but he came and told me, he said, well, I'm going on the road with Chris you now, and uh, we'll be back soon. I say, you too? Because I look down like you too. And then uh, it, it, it just, I guess they ain't wanted to be with no blacks on the road because it, it was strictly white people. Well, let me ask you a question. Y'all use the kids. Y'all keep using the term black. Why, why y'all everything black? Why y'all always bring up the race issue? Well, uh, that that's just a, a, a way we talk yeah. from, from time to time. We just use it as a as a, a, a adjective or whatever. No, that's the problem. That's yeah. why. That's why you use because that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. That that is the problem. That um, we do take everything serious, and that's why I'm always upset. Six chief manager was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly, so I want everybody to know that we did do what we were supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So I want to put that on record. Mm -hmm. Public wasn't notified. And they try to put you in a position where you destroy yourself. Like me, I, I, I was there like those five years. And out of those five years I was there, at least three and a half, four of them, I probably only missed two or three days total. And the last, once that new regime came in, I pointed out. The tide. I pointed out, and then the, the reason for that, the body was worn down, and other reason, they they have a system where it doesn't work for you. I, I had personal time, personal days, and all that, but I couldn't use them unless they tell me I couldn't. Right. So if I got sick or some matter of fact, the day I pointed out, got sick, I couldn't use my personal time. Mm -hmm. Or your vacation. Or my vacation. Mm -hmm. I left there with vacation. Yeah. Then they wouldn't give it to me. So, so you didn't get no pay, no compensation for that? None. No. I pointed out, got no unemployment, no vacation time, yeah. no right. anything. See, and it's been going on. Yeah. It ain't just Nothing. Going on. It's been going on. And that's my, that's my, that was my supervisor. And I called him yeah. that morning and told him the situation oh. I was in. I was sick, throwing up. I had made it to the parking lot of the job. Went to throwing up. Had to go back home. And I could have used a personal day or sick day or whatever you want to call it because I had them. I had been there and accumulated time. I had vacation time as well. I pointed out so uh, that because I felt as if the plant manager didn't like me voicing my opinion and speaking up because I spoke up when the time came and and he didn't he didn't like when you uh, uh, speak up. Yeah. Okay. That um, we do take everything serious, and that's why I'm always upset. Six chief manager was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into. It was not taken lightly. So I want everybody to know that we did do what we're supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to put that on record. Mm -hmm. Public wasn't notified. Let me ask you first. How many about how many blacks work out there and about how many whites? Say about About 30, about 30, 40 blacks, and about less on the team white. My brother, what's your? About the same, about 30, about 30, 40 black, about 10 white, about 8 to 10 white. How many top level black supervisors? <laughs> One. Does he have a voice? No. no. You agree with him? I say the roster holds 70 people there. 70 people, so I give it 60 on, I give it 55 on black, you might got about 
three, four Mexican, and the rest of it Caucasian. Um, so seventy-five percent. Seventy-five percent. Okay. Right. Would you agree with that, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, I do. You agree with that too? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, do you believe in your heart of hearts? with the number of black people that keep that plan a running, or, or float, that somebody that's black ought to be somewhere, somewhere in top level management? Yeah. Yes, yes of yes, course. Yeah. Yeah. After these many years. I mean, that's been out there a good while, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got a new name, but I think it's been there for a pretty good while. Yeah. And you, uh, uh, would I be safe in saying that there is no retirement plan? Yes, sir. Yes, you be correct. Yes, would I be safe in saying there is no real uh, benefits, yes, sir. except your four hundred one k. Some places like that now, yeah. so it ain't like you know. So. That's not and, a career job. Right, I, you yeah. said that before. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's not a career, career job. job. Okay. But even though I do want to say this, okay. even though that y'all have taught us some valuable lessons, mm -hmm. what need to be done, not just there but in our future. But even though that if we don't affect the 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 problem that they have, at least somebody who's still there will hear us coming forward and they'll push forward yeah. with it. You know what I mean? So it's not about us. It's about those who left behind right there still in because we're away from it. Yeah. But our friends and family. Oh, we still once in was it. in that yeah, situation. Right. Yeah. It, it, I, I, I'm cool because I'm not going back there, but I don't mind voicing my opinion to what's really going on to help somebody else that's there open their mind. Right. And, nah. and do it the proper way. Yeah, but, oh, go ahead. That um we do take everything serious. And that's why on August 6th, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly. So I want everybody to know that we did do what we we're supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So, I to put that on record. Mm -hmm. Public wasn't notified. And, um, you know, I try to rally, get everybody together today, you know, to come to the meeting, which, like I said, a lot of them still work out there. And, you know, the first thing they'll say, you know, he got with everybody, the guy that sent me all the pictures and, you know, and keep me updated, he got with everybody. And the first thing they say, they, they're scared. They just scared. They know they're going to get five, they step four. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's not right. But See, like I said, it's plenty of people willing to talk to you. He he ain't more worried about who hung the noose. He worried about who took the picture so he can find out. Right. That's right. what he worried about. Right. Run, run, run that by me again. <laughs> he ain't more worried about the noose. He more worried about who took the picture so he can find him. Right. You think so? I yes, know sir. so. I know That's right. Yeah. And to me, this picture that um we do take everything serious. And that's why on August 6th, 6, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly. So I want everybody to know that we did do what we were supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So, I wanted to put that on the record. Mm -hmm. Public wasn't notified. This picture reminded me, I'm going to tell you, I was like, what I was speaking the other day on. They can't do it this way no more. So, they working. They say, we can't hang you like this, but we can kill you by working with you. Like this. Mm -hmm. like this. That's a threat. That's a threat. That's right. It's mm -hmm. money to me, so they going to do it. That's, what mm -hmm. like That's why they work, all your, work yeah. you all those hours. Yeah. Yeah. If you look back, and uh, it's been about 10 long. or 15 years. I might be a little long. I know a couple of people. They got a, it was in the old break room up there on there. They had a plaque with one of the people that, and majority of them were black people that died and they worked that yeah. fell yeah. dead yeah. at that job. Yeah. See, that's another thing. And that's a people don't, they, that people don't talk about. It's an old aircraft headed that way. Yeah, old aircraft. We just walk in, you see all the plaques that, yeah, you see all the, the people that don't put in all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, grandparents, mm -hmm. uh, great grandparents, yes, they don't put all the time, man. Yeah. They got a knowledge. Mm -hmm. But when the new the new company bought it, well, this is a quad, 
Mm-hmm. Everything got took down. Yeah, they even changed the whole plant to the cross to the yeah. you know other plant. Like they yeah. changed everything about everything. Okay. And like I said, they don't care nothing about kicked down the road. See, and you know, yeah. it's I thought down there to the uh, unemployment office that it was a limit to where you work a person. And like I said, 14, 13 hours every day, every day, Monday through Saturday. That's no break, man. What's mean no break? That um. We do take everything serious. And that's why on August 6th, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly. So I want everybody to know that we did do what we were supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm-hmm. So, one to put that on break. Mm-hmm. Public wasn't notified. Yeah. No breaks. You get one break you in your life. Yeah, one break. That's yeah. it. But you working 14, 15 hours, hours a day. day. Yeah. So the people that y'all li- left out there, they still doing. Still going still through. It. I talked to a fella uh, this morning. I talked to a fella this morning, and he's still going through it. And you know he's trying to find a way out. Yeah, it, there you go. And, and it is hard to find a way out when they working you like that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't get out and go look for another job because right. you got to be on that job. Right. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you got to really find that way out. Yeah. And, and, and you, you don't have an opportunity. You, know, you don't if have you, it. If you do, I work the same day. Take a bath and and, and and you sleep. Yeah, you sleep. It's, it, it's been night. Huh? I didn't even eat. Mm-hmm. I just. Uh-huh. Fall asleep. It was nice. I looked just like this here. All right. You know what I mean? You, yeah. boy, you couldn't go look for no job. And then yeah. that's, you know, that was the job that you depended on right now. Because you got your family, you got your kids, you got everybody. Okay, this is the last. That um, we do take everything serious. And that's why on August 6th, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assess the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly. So I want everybody to know that we did do what we were supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to put that on the mm-hmm. Public wasn't notified. Okay, um, you are the fourth black man with something to say about this company. And what's the name of this company? Aqualic. Aqualic Bear Prep from America. And used to be Bear Prep. Bear Prep. And what's your name? Kelvin Wade. And uh, what did you do at this company? I was a gun operator, um, jail coder. I moved around doing numerous jobs. Okay. And when we say that, what does that entail? What, you mean? what do you do? What do you do? Hands on? Hands on. Hands on work. Okay. Uh, when did you leave? Um, about a month ago. This is my third time working now. This is your third time. Why did you leave the other time? I moved out of town. Okay, different reasons. Okay. Ready? But when today they showed you about, showed you those pictures, do you think that's a reflection of what goes on there? And why did you come with these individuals to tell your story? It's very much a reflection. I feel like this. That same picture right here. If you, if, if they would have had, a, somebody would have had a Black Panther sign up there, whatever person, black man that was responsible in that area, they'd have been fired right then. No question there. They'd have got rid of a black, would have been a black, a black Panther flag up there. Mm-hmm. That black man would have been fired from over that work area. Mm-hmm. He would have been no question there. Okay, but, but that's a United States flag. There's nothing wrong with the flag, is it? No, it's the noose behind the flag, in front of the flag. Okay, the noose. Okay, we can't see it. Pick up the bigger one because yeah. we can't see it. Oh, so that, that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. And do you think the managers, uh, supervisors, corporate office, knew anything about that type of feelings or that type of thing going on? They are aware of it because 90% of the blacks that work there, they get underpaid. And 90% of the blacks that get fired from there or resign from there, 90% of the blacks don't get unemployment. But if you go back and check the, the books, the records, the white folks get there 
Every black man that fight for unemployment, they fight against it. You never get it. Because they're going to go back because of the color of your skin. They write it up. They write it. They, the, when you leave, they don't get put on their paperwork while you really left. They write it up in a way where you won't be able to get your unemployment. Right. But the whites get there. Okay, what's your name again? Kelvin Wade. Kevin Wade, hold on just one minute, okay? What's your name again, my brother? Kevin Wade. What was your name, Kevin Wade? Kevin. I'm Kevin. Kevin, Kevin. y'all brother? We twins. Oh, okay. I'm okay. I'll be, my, I'll be quiet. Okay, so... Tell us again about that unemployment, because you said you got something to say on that too. Because I, I was a supervisor there, so I met them, all us worked there together. Once they once they depart, they departed from that job, the proper way to write it up, they is not written up the proper way. You're right you're writing these writing these um this paperwork up as if they quit or they just refuse to work to deny the unemployment for the black so, for the for the blacks. So now when they go fight for the go fight for the unemployment for whatever circumstance they are for them having to leave, now you got they when they go get their paperwork, they like, man, that didn't happen. You wrote this up wrong. It's nothing said. Push up on the rug. And the reason being because so many people have kept their mind closed over the years, letting them get away with it. But that's why we're here now to voice let the voices, our voices be heard to motivate other people that still stuck in this work environment because what's not fair to me like I said, I was a supervisor, give me a chill talking about it, I was a supervisor if I would have came in today that morning, like I said, it's not the flag department, it's the nuisance mm -hmm. that guy who's authorizing that area, if he didn't do it I would have tore it down because I wouldn't have wanted to disturb nobody else from seeing that ignorance, he didn't tear it down I got the picture of something that morning. You went and got some black guy to show them what's hanging up here. Like it's a game. Mm -hmm. Like it's really a real game. Mm -hmm. Like, because I'm far from prison. I don't know some far from prison. So I don't, I don't, I ain't gonna condone nothing that I don't entertain. I don't entertain racism. So why should a company as good as uh, quite a bit supposed to be with all these vendors, why would you support that? Why would you still let that same maintenance man who authorized in that area still be employed there? But only excuse you can give it, you can't prove he did it. You can't prove he did it. He's the only one authorized in that area. Let now remind you, it's only one ship. So in order for you to do that, if you didn't do it that day before you got on, you had to do it early that morning before the ship started. Mate, it's the first one in that building every morning. Everybody know who got keys to that gate. Mate, it's got, they the first ones in there. So you had to do it. If you didn't do it that evening before you got off, you came in there before everybody started show, and you hung that. You could already probably have the flag up, but you throw that nuisance up. You had to do that in the time when everybody else was working, when nobody could just say, oh, I just seen the maintenance man over there doing that. That's an authorized area. Nobody, I, I was a supervisor there. Nobody's authorized to be in that area but maintenance. Gotcha. Now, that, um, we do take everything serious. And that's why on August 6th, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly. So I want everybody to know that we did do what we're supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to put that on record. Mm -hmm. Public wasn't notified. So you're saying that the unemployment, if somebody, let's say CNN, MSNBC, Nightline, Dateline, Line, or whatever, uh, ask the company to produce the record on people that did not get unemployment. You say that you think that it would show that black people was the majority yeah, of people. Yeah, 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 I guarantee you that. Okay, since you that um, we do take everything serious. And that's why on August 6th, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. 
and therefore it was looked into, it was not taken lightly, so I want everybody to know that we did do what we were supposed to do, and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to put that on record. Mm -hmm. The public wasn't notified. Since you were still back, let me ask you this question. Um, how many people do you know that retired from out there with some type of retirement? No. Not name. Name. All the years. You talk, you don't retire it. No, not that ain't no deal. No, no. Four one K, they got four one K. Four one K. Four one K. The only thing that job there is for with the with the with the environment, it's just a stepping stone. It's not a career. Like it's just a stepping stone now. Give me your name once again. Calvin Wade. And how long you worked there? Four years. As what? As a supervisor. For my last job, I was a supervisor. First three years, I was a regular employee, but I done everything through the plan. And what was your closing pay? I left there probably at five.
was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly, so I want everybody to know that we did do what we were supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So, I want to put that on the record. Mm -hmm. The public wasn't notified. Because they came down one time that he made a remark, made, made a remark, they didn't want his work. It came well, I don't want to call no name. But who said that? A supervisor said that? That's what the, the plant manager said. The plant manager said, I don't want no name because you all doing yeah. good. We don't want to put nobody names out there because I don't know where it's going. My purpose is, is that somebody can see what's going on here in Valdosta. I have heard other things at some other places, but people are not willing to come out and speak like you all are doing today. Yeah. Go ahead, my brother. They said that he said let them make his work. He was going to work until the sun go up and the sun go down. And he did just that. He did just that. But, but can I ask you something? Because I'm not that smart. Um, I wrote the short bus to school. And I uh, didn't have no tires on it. So <laughs> when they say use a monkey, I mean, I need some help on that. When they say, what you, does that mean? Call you a nigger. That's just a, a, a way he's trying to clean it up, calling you a nigga. And then it's followed up by nooses being displayed. Exactly. And mm -hmm. exactly. What's your name on Skipper? Kevin Wade. Kevin Wade. And that um, we do take everything serious. And that's why on August 6th, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly, so I want everybody to know that we did do what we were supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So I want to put that on the record. Mm -hmm. The public wasn't notified. My beautiful brother. All right, what's what's your name? Really Aikens. Last name? Really Aikens. Aikens. You got any cousins over in Quibble? Mm -hmm. There's an Aikens over there. Yes, Madison. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but uh, <laughs> do you still work there? No, I'm working there. When did you leave? About five months ago. How long did you work there? About five, five years. Five years? Yeah, about five years. What was your end of pay? Yeah. 
and he was another thing when he cut him off. It's like this this where you can tell the the racism for real. Like you got you got a handful of whites, the majority of blacks. When when a white person come up and tell you they got to leave for a certain reason early, it's no problem. Plant manager cool with it. But when it's a black person come and say they got to do, oh you you you, you might not have a job. You might you gonna have some kind of lash back with that. From the black man trying to go home and handle some of his bills, cause some days you get out, of, you know, he get, he don't even got enough consideration to let you pay your bills. You work six, seven days a week. You getting up at seven o'clock at night. You ain't even got. We don't have numerous meetings about this. He don't even want to try to address it till the black when the black man comes speak for. Hey, could we get off this time at least on Friday so we go pay our bills? It's a problem. But when a white guy, I done seen him more than one time, go and say he need to go handle something, It's no problem. You don't know to my no stat, he go him, he been but a black guy do it, oh you might lose your job. You're gonna get a point or something to you. From listening to you all, and if my ability to count is correct, there are five of you all. Right. And maybe more. Yeah, plenty, there's plenty of more. But my question is, how could workers in 2019 let all this go on? And you haven't found a civil rights organization, you haven't found a news media outlet, you haven't found anybody that would, attorney or somebody to look into your situation. Why haven't you all done that? Somebody. Why haven't somebody done that? I'm going to be honest with you, Because, and I have to speak for me, coming up where I grew up, we were like, we say something to me, we're going to get it. You say something out of the way, we out of pocket, we're going to get it. So, it was always like push up on the road, no you talking to me. But now I'm at an age now, I'll be 44 this year, we'll be 44 this year. Now I'm at an age now where I ain't fighting with this. So I'm gonna use with this. I mean, so even though I'm not employed there, I still got friends there. I still got people I still communicate with there. So that's how the picture was able to get to us because we still communicate with people in that environment. Okay, it was a lot of stuff done while we was there. Even myself pushed up under the road. But when you get stuff like this, you coming in from work, coming in from work, and you see stuff like this, and you don't work it, you don't work it, um, twelve, thirteen hour shifts, and you coming in and to see this, not the flag, but the newsome that's in front of the flag, that that's like a kick in the face. That's like you got to spit in the face. While I'm focused in on that noose, what does that say to a black man down south when he see it anywhere? What does it say to you? Racism. What does it say to you? Racism. Racism. Hang a nigga. That's what it say. Hang a black man. <laughs> that's what it say. However they want to swing it, that's what it's saying for them. But to me, see, it, it makes me angry. Right now I'm getting mad now because of the fact it's not the flag. It's what's in front of it. In, in 2019, we still got this going on. We not we know it's not gonna disappear. We know it's gonna be some of it gonna be swept up on the road before. This to come in, you to come in, and the majority of this plant is red by black. Blacks are more dominant in this plant. For for them to come in and see this, you don't appreciate it. Because if you had as you appreciate it, the, the person who seen this would have tore it down before the shift even got in. I would have took a picture as a supervisor. I would have took a picture, tore it down, and showed it to my supervisor. That's what that's the proper way. I would have let everybody came in and got all riled up because of this ignorance. Now, as the, as the, the plant manager or whoever I go to, he got to address this. Because you don't want the people to get riled up about this. Because that's like you're spitting out their face. Uh, do you all remember, I don't know how many years ago it was, but the government ruled that the news represent a felony. That's, a, that's federal now. The news, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Bob Worthy is going to call him, and he gonna, I want him to talk to you all about that. Now, but anything anybody else have anything to say? That um, we do take everything serious. And that's why on August 6th, six, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly. So I want everybody to know that we did do what we we're supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So I want to put that on the record. Mm -hmm. The public wasn't notified. Anyway. And I will close after this. All right. Today is August the 6th.
459. We've been here for over an hour. And finally, what's your name? Willie Akins Jr. Do you have any problems with me publishing this on Facebook or going public with this to let people know? You give me permission. You to get to free press. What's your name? Kevin Wade. Mr. Wade, you give me permission to do this? Yes, sir. Not for yourself, but for the people that you left behind, am I correct? Yes, sir. What's your name? Kevin Wade. I do give you permission to let my voice out, my voice be heard. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Ransom. Yes, sir. Will you bear witness oh, yes. that nobody in here was co coerced to oh. say what they said they spoke from their own? From their heart. Do you have a problem with me using this? Not at all. Or even to send it to news media outlets? Not at all. So they will know Tell what is going on in Tyler Town, USA. Tell them. That nobody Tell it. probably would publish. But we report Tell it. what others ignore. Tell it. My beautiful brother, yes, what's sir. your name? James Joyce. Do you give permission for us to do and to publish under the First Amendment of the Constitution? that we have a right in this country. And we also <laughs> are due to freedom of the press, even if they won't press our issues to the paper, we still have that right. All right. So you give me that permission. I do give you that permission. All right, what's your name? My name is Darrell Davis. Darrell Davis, you the first one. They're gonna see you as a troublemaker because we would not have known about this. All right. If you, have, if you hadn't told somebody. All right. So, I just want to know, do you also grant permission to release this and make it public for the good right. of the people that work at work at this company? I can't think of the name of it. Man, do y'all know the name of it? The new name is what? Aquatic, Aquatic 56. 56. Plant 56. That's what the 56 stands for. That's the 56 plant. Okay. And does anybody know the official address? 1610 P.D. Roger Road. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Boulevard. And where is the home office? That's Tennessee. Uh, yes. That's in Tennessee. Corporate. Tennessee. Corporate office in Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay. They may need to know about this as well. Please. They may already know. Please. But the people that works there, they're going to have to do a little work for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, this is the Get To Free Press. I'm George Boston Rhymes. I'm a retired military veteran. I started this work in 1975. I did it before I got out of the military. If you go to kvci.blogspot.com, you'll see when I was writing, and I'm not a writer, but my heart had letters that I had to put on paper. And so that's what I did. And then I picked up a camera and started going video. And if you go to my site, you will find 4,000 subscribers and 200 or something. And I never asked for nobody to subscribe to my channel. I say, if you love the truth, Subscribe if you don't. You don't have to come back no more. Right. And over. That um, we do take everything serious, and that's why on August sixth, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into. It was not taken lightly. So I want everybody to know that we did do what we we're supposed to do, and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -hmm. So I want to put that on record. Mm -hmm. Public wasn't notified. People don't want us to pick up our camera and do our own reporting. But I'm here to tell you that all that you hear in the news about Police brutality. If it wasn't for the cell phone, it would have never been heard. But this right here is better than a nine millimeter. That's right. A nine, a nine millimeter gets you in jail, but this can get you exactly. free. That's right. Y'all right. have a nice day. Right. I appreciate your courage. I'm gonna set somebody lead us in a prayer before we close. Gracious God, we're so grateful to you for. How good you've been to us, how you brought us from the earliest existence of our days up to and including this present time. Bless our efforts. 
Go with us, stand by us as we fight this battle. Help us to succeed in our efforts. Bless each one of these, these gentlemen here. Bless their families. Bless them individually. Bless us collectively. Go with us, stand by us. And when our mission is done here on this earth, give us a home in your kingdom where we can praise your name forever. Amen. And in the volume of sacred law, and in the volume of sacred law, St. John 8.32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set it, and make you free. Then I went down the road a little further, and I talked to Dr. Matthew. Chapter 24, verse 35. And it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stand forever. Amen. That's how powerful the scriptures are. Don't you remember, because you're from Brooks County. Do you remember the race problem, right? Some people thought it couldn't be done for a black man to come from where he came. But see, God had a hand in the plan to prove that his word would stand forever. And it happened. Y'all have a nice day. God bless you, and thank you for your courage. Thank you, brother. Peace be unto you. God bless you, brother. Thank you so much, man. Peace be unto you. Y'all got my cards, right? I got it. I'm going to go on that site tonight. Me and my wife are going to go on. Thank you. That we do take everything serious. And that's why on August 6th, 6, Chief Manningham was notified and went out there and actually assessed the situation, talked to the plant manager, the assistant plant manager, and also turned over to the FBI to let them look into it. And therefore, it was looked into, it was not taken lightly, so I want everybody to know that we did do what we were supposed to do and that we did exactly as we should have. Mm -mm. So, I wanted to put that on the mm -mm. Public wasn't notified. Since you all talked yesterday, do you have anything else you want to share? that you might not have known yesterday and you want to share for the, the benefit of the camera. What, what this is is nothing more than a, an account of what's going on, and hopefully others will step up. And before it's open, you all met somebody else who want to talk, just talk to us. Yes, I, 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 like I said, I still got friends that work there. So I still communicate with a lot of men and women that work there. And, and I don't mind being a voice for the ones who still there and the ones that are going to come along after all of this. But, um, I, I, I learned some yesterday from talking to y'all guys. Y'all gave me a lot of wisdom yesterday. So the day while I was at work, I was contemplating on the conversation we had. And one of the things that caught my attention was the noose in front of the flag. Right then, for everything that I ever done, every time I went to prison, every time I went to prison for my acts of breaking the law, I was investigated and I was prosecuted. That, that, that particular scene, that morning when they came up, that was a crime scene. So in my mind, after communicating with y'all yesterday, my mind, I'm thinking, why wasn't authorities notified? Not saying VPD didn't do their job. Not saying Lyons County Sheriff's Department didn't do their job, but they never was notified. As a plant manager, as a supervisor, somebody should have called the authorities first. Because that could have easily got out of hand between the cultures. Easily could have got out of hand. So authorities should have been called because when I get out of that, I'm a forensic type of person. I watch a lot of forensic. DNA hanging right there. So <laughs> you're trying to figure out who put it there. So, DNA is on that noose. So, 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 so from what you were telling us today that we didn't get into yesterday, this noose automatically generates some type of a hate crime that's right. or a crime scene that's right. that should be investigated that's right. by somebody at that company who cares about living beings enough that's right. to investigate, to call 911, right. the police, or at least his home office of the plant. 
to let somebody know that something ain't right here. That's so, right. so nobody did that. Nobody right. done that because inside that plant, your investigation ain't going to stand firm. She let authority done their job. Handle the proper way. That's supposed to be. That's supposed to be in the bag. That's evidence. That's all. That's supposed to be evidence. But it's ne it never was taken properly. They never called authority. They never. Nobody never called authority. I get a call today. They just taking the flag down. Mm -hmm. Authority of the police, but VPD, Lyons County Sheriff officers already had this tagged in bag as exhibit A, B, whatever they want to use it for. Because it had everything that I did wrong. In my time of breaking the law, I was investigated and I was prosecuted. I feel the person who done this need to be investigated and prosecuted. Now let me ask you a question. Why didn't you call 911 when you saw it? I wasn't there. I, I quit that job um, July the 8th. I mean, if you were there, would you have called? If I was there, I would have called the police and I would probably lost my job that day. If I was, and you said that yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, I would have probably lost my job. If I were there, I would have called the police and nine times out of ten, I can bank it. I would have lost my job that day because I wouldn't have went in there and done no work. That the work, the work part was over with when I came in and seen that. Automatically, you put you pose a threat to me when I see that. To me, I can't speak for everybody else, but for me, you pose a threat for me. So you wouldn't have got no tour. It, you can't just put all your time into a tour. You got to care about the people. I wouldn't have put my put my hand on nail tour. Authority should have been out there telling this the proper. It was a crime scene. Caution tape should have been up right there. That's a good point. Now, you said that you know of other people that may come forth. This is the Get To Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rhines. And I want to continue with bath crap and the noose that were displayed. <music> Greetings. Yes, you're right. This is George Boston Rhines. I'm in Valdosta, Georgia. Um, I was just hit up on Facebook with a post about a noose hanging at a business here in Valdosta, Georgia. However, you didn't leave contact information. I've contacted some of my contacts, and I understand that it's a big thing. But if you don't give some contact information, nobody can reach out to address this issue. That goes for CNN, MSNBC, Action News, etc., etc. You've got to give information. If what we hear is true, and what we just had happen with 31 people dead, somebody got to stand up. Yes, somebody got to stand up. And I want you to know that since I did this live feed on Facebook, once I was notified about the news at Bathcraft, I have interviewed approximately 10 people. I have gone before the Valdosta City Mayor and Council, and I have done a little more homework, legwork, if you will. I also have a current or formal former worker from that plant. And from me talking to the people, all black Americans, many of them agree that they need income for their families. And therefore, some of them want to maintain a low profile, and can you blame them in a place like Valdosta and Lowndes County, Georgia? The person I have before me today is very interesting in that she had the nerve, or he had the nerve,
to come and sit down with us. So you, CNN, MSNBC, Associated Press, would see and understand that if a noose was displayed in any workplace across America, it would be great concern, considering all of the violent acts that we've had recently across our beloved republic. And so today, I'm going to ask this current or a former worker, I'm going to ask her to sound the alarm once for her yes response or two for his no response. The only reason I'm doing this is because I addressed this issue. And, and, and by the way, before you condemn me, I didn't know nothing about this until I received a call from the president of the Justice League United out of Waycross. He saw it on Facebook. Then he sent it to me, and I started getting more information, and that's what we're doing here today. This is a continuation. In the background, I'm going to try and play the video that's already on Boston GBR YouTube. I did that because I love you just that much. Now let's get down to this brief interview. It's going to be short, but believe me, I have a lot of information, but I'm not going to give it all to you. My beautiful individual, I want to thank you for coming today. And uh, did you come here today? Thank you very much. I addressed the mayor and council uh, at the last council meeting, and I was told that there was a electrical cord hanging from the ceiling. Uh, I believe that you may be able to verify if that was electrical cord or if it was something in shape that most people would receive as a noose. Let me repeat the question. Would you say that whatever was displayed, was it a noose or something compatible with what people would say as a noose? Okay. Do you have names of people that may be involved in either displaying the noose or responsible for the department in which the noose was displayed? Do you know the exact person that displayed the noose? If you cannot verify who did it, you can verify that there were or was a valid object hanging behind or in front of the United States flag at Bathcraft in Industrial Park, am I right? You, can you state that other workers saw the noose? Did anybody get violent? Did anybody injure anyone? that you know of? Do you know if the Valdosta City Council or the Chief of Police or the FBI was notified? Not what you think, but can you verify that they were notified? Without calling names, Do you believe that the people that was the people that was first on the scene to see the noose or, or in the area was black or white? Were they black? Were they white? Thank you.
the people in the area and from what you've heard from other current and former workers did the supervisors and others at Babcraft take this serious? So they did take it serious. Thank you. Um, do you know if they are investigating? They're not. Thank you. So let me close this out. Would I be right in saying that you have much more information, but you're just not giving it here? Will you verify to anybody that watched this video that this is a serious matter and should be investigated by either news media, the corporate office, the city, or county government, but somebody should take notice because it isn't serious? Okay. Um, do you think or believe that Bathcraft locally or at the corporate office, do you think that they will resolve this issue or address it in terms of finding out who actually did this? So you don't think that they are going? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let me close by saying this. Have you, now, there's other people who have stepped forward, but have you also provided some type of statement to show that something is wrong at Bath Crown? Okay. Thank you. If you, and this is the last question, if you were asked to go and face a court of law, would you be willing to do that? If there's in, in any situation, would you be willing to testify in court that what you're saying is true? Thank you. Have it in that workplace, and they did everything they could to keep from getting violence. This is the presentation I did before the mayor and council on behalf of the workers that called me, that met with me. Now, let me say this to all of the citizens here in Valdosta. If nobody in Valdosta will step up to the plate and assist these workers, some of whom are veterans, 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 just like myself. Now, what does that mean? That means that under our form of government, the people we vote into office should have a responsibility to listen to the voices and cries of the people and their children. Why should any citizen in the United States of America be required to work in a workplace where a noose is displayed, something that black Americans, black Africans know what that means. Why have not the mayor, the city council, the chairman, of the Board of Commissioners, the Police Department, the Sheriff's Department, the GBI, the FBI, the Valdosta Daily Times, CBS, ABC, Fox News, and other mainstream news media. Why have they not called these people? Why have not 
the Associated Press. Is Val Dost and Lyles County that powerful until they just totally ignore the voters here in Val Dost and Lyles County? Now, I address the mayor and council. Two of the representatives told me that it was not a noose, it was an electric cord extending from the ceiling. And that's all it was. In other words, it's nothing to be concerned about that somebody just overreacted. Now me, I try to be of at least average intelligence. Let's just suppose that that's the way it was. See, I'm retired military. And you don't stay in the military for 20, 21 years without being a supervisor, without taking supervisory courses at the initial stage the intermediary stage, and then the next level. So there's one thing that I know, number one. It's supposed to be investigated by somebody. Yeah. In this situation, just like in the military, you have a responsibility to call your boss, who will definitely call somebody over him and somewhere, if they fail to call the chief of police or the Lyons County Sheriff's Department or the corporate office to send somebody down to investigate, interview the people involved, especially the workers, and ask them what happened. How do you feel about it? Did it weaken morale? Did it stress anybody out? These are basic questions that Mayor John Gale and each city council member should be concerned about here in Valdosta. Wait a minute, I haven't finished yet. Chairman Slaughter of the Board of Commissioners and each commissioner should be concerned about that because people are being killed across the nation along, along racial lines. So we should be more concerned here in Valdosta and Lyons County based upon the historic archival record. I have the record wherein a noose was displayed at Lyons County High School in that tree. Do y'all remember that? Well, go to kvci.blogspot.com or just Google Lyons County or nukes in a tree and you should pull it up. Wait a minute, I haven't finished yet. Do you remember under Sheriff Prime, a sheriff deputy had an effigy of a black man with a rope around his neck on his garage and he said it was a Halloween prank and nobody until this day know what corrective action was taken if it was properly investigated and so we must not allow this to happen CNN MSNBC Rachel Maddow well, don't don't let this go HLN you've been to Valdosta before Victor Blackwell you came in the KJ case. Let us not sweep this under the rug. We are asking, I'm asking, the Get To Free Press, a social media guy with just 4,300 subscribers and nearly 2 million views. I'm only asking that we respect our black men and women in uniform. Because if, black, if the black man, woman, and their children cannot go to work and not be intimidated, not be harassed, not to be relegated to three-fifths of a human being, and nothing be done about it, the question is arising in the black community. Now, should blacks play football? Should blacks join the armed forces and put their life on the line? for a nation, 
that after 464 years will not give them equal rights as white people. And let me close, and I'm, I, I am closing now. According to the Library of Congress, blacks were brought from Africa not in 1619 as they have in the history books of America. But the black man was brought in North America, to North America, in the year 1555. That's 464 years ago. I know the United States was not in existence, but they still came here. And need, need, and, let, and need not talk about the Mayas where black folk was already here and they was not slaves either. So I'm a fully aware of that as well. And so I'm saying to you that after all these years, 464 years in North America, and you talk about racism, you talk about hate, if after 464 years, and the black man, black woman, and their children do not hate white people like white folk hate them. Now look, if you could make us start what many white supremacists want, and that's a race war. Yeah, we know y'all want a race war. But if we have gone through every ounce of hatred that you thrust upon us for 464 years, and we didn't start a race war, and we don't hate you. What you can do now to make us hate you? We love God too much to hate you, but we gonna demand justice because the God of our ancestors demands that we never back up, not even an inch, from being treated as you, your children, your grandchildren, and coming generations. You want that for your children, and we must demand that for our children. It's just, it's just that simple. And so I'm going to thank you all for listening. And I want you to know that this intro will go in front of individuals that actually gave their words, their information, their feelings, and their mistreatment about this company. But the major question that the voters should ask in Valdosta and Lyons County, should we vote the same elected officials back into office? If they don't say nothing about this publicly, if they don't take a stand on this, then, then should you vote them back into office? Should you? Once again, to get to Free Press, George Boston Rams, I do this because somebody must do it. Isn't it sad? Been almost two weeks. It is to be two weeks tomorrow. What have you heard on WALB about it? What have you heard about this on ABC, CBS, Fox? are written in the Valdosta Daily Times, our only newspaper. This will be my sixth or seventh video. And I do that because I believe in the white European founding fathers of this great republic, that we would have freedom of speech and freedom of the press. And while I'm at it, Valdosta and Lyons County, over many government buildings, do not even fly a Georgia state flag, and that is disrespectful to all who ever served in the armed forces of the United States of America. And if no general, if no full bird colonel, if no lieutenant colonel, if no major, if no captain, if no first lieutenant, if no second lieutenant, if no warrant officer, if no Gunnery Sergeant, 
or chief master sergeant say anything about it, I'm going to continue to say that it is indeed a disgrace on Titletown, USA, not to honor our military personnel, especially those stationed at Moody Air Force Base and the members of our National Guard honoring. And it is also disrespectful to the mothers and fathers who've lost their children in time of war and peace, and you will not even fly a Georgia state flag like other states across the United States of America. You all have a nice day. Do you have to go now, brother? Do you have to go now, sister? They'll never know who you are, will they? But the day will come when just maybe you can say yes again. Thank you. This is the Get Two Free Press, George Boston Ryan. Bye bye, we're gone. And I do it this way because I do want to be polite and I want to understand the pain of what people go through here in Valdosta and will not put their face on the camera because they fear because of retaliation. You know what I say? And we all got to find a way to take care of our family. Bye bye, we're gone. Peace be unto you. If you all are wondering, while I have my two mascots, y'all know I've been using them a long time, especially against Walmart Stores Incorporated. This is my white friend. This is my black friend. You see how they're looking at each other? And we're going to have to look at each other, too. Peace be unto you. Bye-bye. We go. Today is August the 6th, 459. We've been here for over an hour. And... Finally, what's your name? Willie Akins Jr. Do you have any problems with me publishing this on Facebook or going public with this to let people know? You give me permission give to get to free press. What's your name? Kevin Wade. Mr. Wade, you give me permission to do this? Yes, sir. Not for yourself, but for the people that you left behind, am I correct? Yes, sir. What's your name? Calvin Wade. I do give you permission to let my voice out, my voice be heard. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Ransom. Yes, sir. Will you bear witness oh, yeah. that nobody in here was co coerced to oh, yeah. say what they said? They spoke from their own. From their heart. Do you have a problem with me using this? Not at all. Or even to send it to news media outlets? Not at all. So they will know Fair what is going on in Titletown, USA. Tell that nobody. Tell it. Probably would publish, but we report Tell it. what others ignore. Tell it. My beautiful brother, yes, what's sir. your name? James Joyce. Do you give permission for us to do and to publish under the First Amendment of the Constitution that we have a right in this country and we also <laughs> are due to freedom of the press, even if they won't press our issues to the paper, we still have that right. All right. So you give me that permission. I do give you that permission. All right. What's your name? My name is Daryl Davis. Daryl Davis, you were the first one. They're going to see you as a troublemaker because we would not have known about this All right. if, you haven't, if you hadn't told somebody. All right. So I just want to know, do you also grant permission to release this and make it public for the good right. of the people that work at, work at this company? I can't think of the name of it. Do y'all know the name of it? The new name is what? Aquatic 56. 56. Plant 56. Plant 56. That's what the 56 stands for. That's the 56 plant. Okay. And does anybody know the official address? 1610 P.D. Roger Road. That's it. Okay. Russian Boulevard. And where is the home office? That's Tennessee. Uh, yes. That's in Tennessee. Corporate. Tennessee. Corporate office in Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay. They may need to know about this as well. Please. They may already know, Please. but the people that works there, they're going to have to do a little work for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, this is the Get To Free Press. I'm George Boston Rhymes. I'm a retired military veteran. I started this work in 1975. I did it.